So, and it, it tends to be the people that are uh, that read, read a lot or, or are interested in card events. For many years, landing a heavy orbital booster on a ship was considered impossible. The fuel needed to slow down a 200-ton vehicle would exceed what you would save by reusing it. Shock waves from supersonic engine firing would destroy the landing gear. Experts at NASA and Boeing said it could not be done with the accuracy needed to hit a floating deck. Blue Origin tried and failed early on. Then SpaceX landed Falcon 9 and prepared Starship for the same feat. This is the story of how they turned a crazy dream into a daily routine. Here is how they made the impossible routine. The problem was brutally technical. Starship is 50 meters tall and weighs about 200 tons when it is full. Trying to hit a small target in the middle of the ocean while dropping from space is like trying to throw a refrigerator into a moving bathtub without touching the edges. In the past, rockets like the Space Shuttle only landed on long runways. Even then, they threw away the big orange fuel tank and spent months fixing the engines. Most other companies just threw their expensive boosters into the ocean after one use. Engineers calculated that even a tiny mistake in opening the legs would flip the rocket instantly. Experts agreed that no materials and no guidance system could handle the shock of hitting the deck at high speed. The physics of the rocket equation made this seem like a dead end. To land a rocket, you have have to carry extra fuel, but fuel is heavy. Carrying that extra weight means you can carry less cargo. For 50 years, the math said that the trade-off was not worth it. It was cheaper to build a cheap rocket and throw it away than to build an expensive one and try to save it. This is why the Saturn V and the Delta IV were designed to sink to the bottom of the sea. The idea of recovery was seen as an engineering trap that would waste time and money. Previous attempts at sea-based operations showed how hard the ocean environment can be. A project called Sea Launch tried to use a stationary pad in the water during the 1990s. It was not flexible and cost too much money to maintain. The salt water would eat away at the metal, and the waves made it impossible to keep the platform steady. Boeing and other partners eventually left the project because the risks were too high. They felt it was safer to keep using land-based pads, even if it limited where they could launch. This created a world where spaceflight was rare and very expensive. The environment of re-entry adds another layer of difficulty. When a rocket comes back from space, it is moving at several times the speed of sound. The air around it turns into plasma because it is so hot. This heat can melt most metals. To survive this, a rocket needs a heat shield. But heat shields are heavy and fragile. On the space shuttle, every tile had to be checked by hand after every flight. This took thousands of hours and cost millions. People believed that a rocket that could land on a ship would be so heavy from heat shielding and legs that it could never carry enough fuel to reach orbit in the first place. Here is how they actually did it. The breakthrough came when they designed foldable, retractable legs stowed in the aft skirt during flight. These legs stay hidden while the rocket climbs, which keeps the vehicle stable and stops it from wobbling as it moves through the air. When the rocket gets close to the ship, sensors tell the legs to open up in a split second. These legs are made of very strong titanium and use liquid-filled pistons to soak up the force of the landing. The bottom part of the rocket, called the aft skirt, is built to spread the heavy weight across four different spots so the metal does not bend or snap. This allows the system to be light enough to fly, but strong enough to survive a hard touchdown. This system works with a method called supersonic retropropulsion. This means the rocket fires its engines while it is still moving faster than a bullet. Most people thought the fire from the engines would hit the air moving past the rocket and cause it to spin out of control. SpaceX proved that they could use the engine exhaust to create a cushion of air that actually stabilizes the booster. By using the Merlin engines on the Falcon 9 and the Raptor engines on Starship, they can control the descent with incredible precision. The engines can change their power level smoothly, kind of like how you can press the gas pedal in your car a little or a lot to change your speed. The steering is handled by grid fins. These look like metal waffles on the side of the booster. They move around to help the rocket point exactly where it needs
needs to go as it falls through the wind. Unlike traditional wings, grid fins work well at both high and low speeds. They provide the control needed to guide a 15-story building to a specific spot on a moving boat. The computer on the rocket is doing 100,000 math problems every single second to keep everything balanced. It watches the wind, the engine power, and how the ship is moving on the waves. It is like trying to balance a broom on the palm of your hand while you are walking on a boat. The financial reality of this mastery has changed the industry forever. One SLS launch costs $4.1 billion, according to the NASA Inspector General. Because that rocket is thrown away, all that money disappears after one flight. In contrast, SpaceX has designed Starship to be used hundreds of times. While the current Falcon 9 costs about $62 million per launch, Starship is intended to cost much less once it is fully operational. The goal is to reach a point where a launch costs $10 million. This would mean that for the price of one SLS flight, you could fly Starship 410 times. When you can reuse the hardware, the only major cost left is the fuel. This creates a massive competitive lead for the United States. While SpaceX NASA structures have allowed for rapid growth, the difference in speed is clear. Boeing spent $4.2 billion on the Starliner project, but a software error in 2019 prevented it from reaching the space station on its first try. While Boeing and ULA were focused on old designs, SpaceX was willing to test, fail, and fix their hardware in public. They used every crash to find a new problem to fix. They looked at the broken parts to see exactly why they failed. This allowed them to learn much faster than any company that is afraid of making a mistake. The victory is visible in the launch numbers. SpaceX now launches more rockets than all of its competitors and all other countries combined. They have landed their boosters more than 420 times. Some individual boosters have flown 26 times in a row. This has allowed them to build the Starlink satellite network, which provides internet to the whole world. No other company can do this because they do not have enough rockets. If you have to build a new rocket every time you want to launch satellites, you will run out of money before you finish the job. By making the booster return to a ship, SpaceX can launch again in just a few days. This speed is critical because of the new space race with China. China has seen the success of reusable rockets and is working to build their own versions. Right now, China says they will land people on the moon by 2030. Originally, the U.S. was going to beat them by four years. Now that gap is getting smaller because of delays in older programs. SpaceX is the main reason the U.S. can stay ahead. Their ability to fly more than 180 times a year means they can test new ideas faster than anyone else. They are turning the moon from a distant dream into a place where people can actually work. The mastery of the landing legs and the aft skirt also means the rocket is safer for humans. If a rocket is designed to land, it has to be built very strong. It has to handle the stress of going up and the stress of coming back down. This makes it more reliable than a rocket that is only designed to work once. When NASA uses your tax dollars to buy a ride on a Crew Dragon, they are getting a vehicle that has been tested by many previous flights. This is why the Crew Dragon has already flown several operational missions, while other new capsules are still struggling with basic tests. Looking at the system, the use of liquid oxygen and methane fuel in the Raptor engines is a key choice. Older rockets used fuels that were hard to handle or left a lot of soot inside the engines. Methane burns very clean. This means the engines do not need to be taken apart and cleaned after every flight. You can just fill them up and go again. This is exactly how an airplane works. You do not throw away the jet engines after you fly from New York to London. By using the right fuel and the right landing gear, SpaceX is making space travel work like the airline industry. The consequences of this breakthrough are felt across the entire planet. Because launch costs are falling, more schools, small companies, and even small countries can send experiments into space. Things that used to cost $100 million now cost a fraction of that. This is the information hunt in action. 
ocean. We are learning more about our own planet by looking down from above, and we are doing it because we found a way to stop throwing our rockets away. The resource protection of reusing expensive hardware allows that money to be spent on better sensors and more missions. Future projections show that this is only the beginning. SpaceX is building huge ocean platforms that can move to wherever they are needed. These are floating spaceports. They can wait for the rocket in the best spot to save fuel. Because these ships can move, the rockets can can carry much heavier loads into orbit. This will make it possible to build big stations in space or even go to Mars. These ships will have big antennas so they can talk to the rocket every second of the way. They will act like mobile landing pads that guide the falling space towers into place. The ability to land on the ocean also means that launches are safer for people on the ground. If something goes wrong, the rocket is far away from cities. It also allows for polar launches which are important for weather satellites. By having a fleet of drone ships, SpaceX can support daily flights from both the east and west coasts. They have turned the entire ocean into a potential runway. This is a level of strategic intelligence that no other space program has ever had. It turns a fixed problem into a flexible solution that can change as the mission needs change. The mastery of the aft skirt and the retractable legs solved the final piece of the puzzle. It proved that you can build a massive machine that survives the most violent environment known to man and then does it again the next week. The David versus Goliath story of SpaceX against the old giants is over. The metrics show that the new way of doing things is the only way that works in the modern world. With over 420 successful landings and a launch frequency that is doubling every few years, the competitive scoreboard is clear. The era of throwing away millions of dollars in the ocean is ending. We are now entering a time where going to space is more like a daily commute. Your tax dollars are being used more effectively when the hardware can be used dozens of times. The transition from impossible to routine happened because engineers were willing to look at the forces of physics and design design a system that works with them instead of against them. The retractable legs and the smart software have given us the keys to the solar system. SpaceX did not just land a rocket, they made it routine. Over 420 landings while Boeing's Starliner has faced years of delays and Blue Origin has not yet reached orbit with a heavy lift vehicle. The impossible became infrastructure that we use for everything from GPS to global internet. Now Starship aims to do the same at 10 times the scale, turning the moon and Mars from science fiction into an engineering project. 